Hey friends, welcome to another episode. So this week I interview the awesome Courtney Catchins from Sea Dragon Songhouse. She's a vocal liberator, a little bit like me, but she's also a creative consultant and runs an awesome studio. So what's really curious about her is that she's also a somatic voice practitioner. And this, what this means is a body-based approach to releasing and liberating your voice and setting your voice free. The conversation is awesome. It is the meeting point of two nerds who live across the world um, who really come from the same tribe and like to talk about the same stuff. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Before we go any further, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell below to get the latest content on liberating voices and music, spirituality and awakening. Really just to firstly say welcome and it's such a pleasure to meet you. Um, Thank you. On finding you on the internet, there were a lot of things that stood out uh, for me and one of them was uh, that your work is heart-based, which is just an unusual phrase that a lot of people don't use. Uh, <laughs> another one that uh, is your focus on somatic uh, practices. So, so you went into somatic practices essentially to heal and then and really to help others heal. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that phrase. Um, as the wound, so is the gift. Uh, so wherever we're wounded is where we give it to others. Um, so what is um, somatic voice work? How does it, you know, I don't know anything about it. I'm pretty sure most of the people who watch this know nothing about it, but I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so it was uh, created. So Jeannie Levetri, um is is the, the, the queen of, of the somatic voice work world. Um, and she, she's just developed this approach and this practice where you can um, use different vowel sounds, different shapes. Um, you know, you, you sing scales and do exercises, but there's this, just this very focused approach on what exactly it is you're trying to, to strengthen or stretch or develop. Um, at, at any given moment and I feel like for a long long time I would just do exercises just because that's just what what you did you were just supposed to sing some scales and go through some patterns and and um and so again this is this is very focused on the result you're trying to get at any given moment and so um at the same time it's also really honoring um the individual's voice so you know if it doesn't want to go somewhere if it doesn't want to do something you you don't push it you just say okay it sounds like your voice doesn't want to go there today let's try this instead and it's it's just it's honoring the body and the human um, and and the voice you used three words when you were describing the process um, I think they were strengthen uh, stretch and develop things you might add on, you add on to this area, but really what, I, what I'm interested to tease out is what proportion of the work is involved in undoing tension versus adding strength and dexterity and muscle control and add-on, add-ons versus add-offs, you know? Yes, yes, I love that. Um, so ideally through somatic voice work, you're able to express yourself in a totally free and unencumbered way. And so, um, so it really is, um, it, you know, it's, it's strengthening certain areas in an effort to allow tension to release from other areas at the same time. And is there within that a deep um, somatic experience of the distinction between different muscle groups and that you, you're really um, getting embodied and feeling as you shift through your range, feeling things move and let go and allowing that to happen? Yes, and it's so much just about developing awareness like that. Um, awareness of all all the parts up here and throughout the rest of your body um, all the way down to your feet all the way up to the top of your head and the space up here ah, awesome awesome I love that so is, is, is part of the joy 
watching or helping other people flower. Absolutely. Flower, heal, um, ab develop awareness. I feel like through my own uh, vocal development, I got to know myself better just as a person. Um, it's made everything in my life better. And so, so I, I love helping people live more fulfilling lives. So I guess that's what it boils down to and feel loved in the process. <laughs> that's beautiful, I love that. I just wanna pretend that you and I have created a workshop together. We've invited 50 people and they've just come. They don't really know what it's about. And we say to them, we'd like one of you to come up and just sing. But we're gonna close your eyes, we're gonna choose one of you. And I'd say like 80 to 90% of people would go into terror. Why is it that people are so messed up about their voices and so afraid? Yeah, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, um, that, there's a lot to unpack there, right? Um, I do think society also puts, uh, you know, allows, allows this sort of critical, judgmental side towards people's voices and people have, you know, are repeatedly shut down over and over again. Um, people fearing being judged and fearing being ostracized, <laughs> right? Like they're, they're going to say the wrong thing and then they're no one's going to like them and it's a, a huge a huge issue which is part of why I do what I do because it's it's massively prevalent yes. okay so you do encounter a lot of afraid blocked voices absolutely mm. yeah either either they had a trauma at some point that then it affected their voice um or it's it's just a lot of fear and anxiety and different things that have pile on top of each other so we we start to peel away the onion totally um you know uh, my my focus is probably on the the 60 of people who don't consider themselves to be singers and bringing them back to the party um, right <laughs> <laughs> that in western culture which i'm really a part of um we put one person at the, who gets to be a hero and everybody else stands in front of them clapping and like, you're so amazing, you get to be the hero. Um, and that actually you have a neurotic singer and an audience half enjoying themselves who've given away their artistry and their sense of community and, and, that, and that we were meant to sing in a circle. And, and that's actually where the joy is um, when we share it, you know, and everyone's vulnerable together. Um, do you do any, are there any environments in which you do communal singing or community singing? It's so powerful, you know, and we start in a circle and then people start moving. Um, and, and you're, you're passing people and you're looking people in the face, everyone's singing. It's just this, this big, beautiful ambient noise, <laughs> a joyous noise. Yeah. And, and I have done some work before just with, with groups, small groups of, you know, choirs, um, with, with improvisational singing as a group with no preset, you know, rhythms or patterns or anything. It's just, let's all open our mouths and see what comes out at once. And, and just like these dense, amazing, rich harmonies that just seemingly appear out of nowhere. What, what is breathing to you? Um, and how does one breathe to sing, to really support singing? Another huge topic that, um, again, when I was younger was, was very confusing to me. I still don't feel like I have it figured out. Um, it's one of those things that we take for granted and, and, when I start speaking with my clients and my students about breathing, it's, well, I just, I breathe, I'm alive. It's not like I've stopped breathing. And I'm like, but you kind of have stopped breathing. They're like, you know, like, what does that even mean, <laughs> right? Um, but that's definitely been one of my, my big struggles that I've, I've had to work through as well is, is holding a lot of tension up here, um, you know, needing to breathe, um, bring my breathing down, opening up my throat as I breathe, um, timing the breath, uh, 
the, the amount of the air airflow at any given moment. Um, and and uh, one of the things in somatic voice work that we learn is that when you start to sort of free up the tension and develop the different areas, that ideally the breathing, you know, of course you're always working on it, but you want the breathing to, to sort of also develop naturally because once all the, the constriction goes away, you're inside your body and and better able to harness your the power of your own air to get it out without the, the constriction in the way. And then at the same time, sometimes we really just have to stop and focus on how are we breathing? Are we getting full breaths? Are we, um, you know, relaxing? How is our nervous system at the moment? Is breath for you in singing a diaphragmatic breath or is it something else? Is it more than a diaphragmatic breath? Um, for me, as far as thinking of support, I guess I, I think of it as support from the diaphragm. But experimenting just with the core belly muscles, really all the way down, all the way down, all the way even to my feet. Um, cool, I like that. <laughs> That's beautiful. That does bring me to my next question because you very explicitly mentioned the heart in your work on your website and uh, yeah that's not everyone does that and and for some people that could be like a hallmark card out of the heart but actually for a lot of people it really means something and what, what does it mean to do this from the heart for me it it boils down to to compassion um again i've i've experienced so many different settings in my life um, musically and otherwise, where I just haven't been met with compassion, right? And I think, I think that's that's the thing that helps anyone bloom, um, including the voice, is um, is is that kind of love. And then there's just just the idea of of authenticity and um, getting getting your sound and yourself and your art to, to come from a, a very raw, pure, beautiful place. That's deeply intuitive work, you know, that's actually you with that person finding out how to support them into feeling safe and, and being able to express themselves with vulnerability and love and confidence and a bit of fear all at the same time <laughs> That's right I don't, I don't think it's about getting rid of the fear because i don't know that we can ever live totally without it but it's it's working with our our strengths and um and what what makes us unique and magical amazing people it's humbling vulnerable and beautiful. A deep, a deep privilege to be a part of that as well. <laughs> it's a real pleasure to to meet you, Connie. You as well, Jeremy. Thank you so much, and thanks, thanks for being in touch. If you'd like more info about freeing your voice, developing the courage to stand up in front of people to speak, sing, and really express your utterly unique magic, click the link below in the description to get a really practical PDF guide to transforming your voice. Please also like this video and subscribe to this channel to watch more content related to this, much of which adventures down into more detail on any of the themes explored here.